So if you just found this video from like a search or something like that, um, get out of here, go back to part one and watch that first. Um, in the meantime, if you've come from part one, welcome back. Uh, we're moving on to the camera, or cameras, I suppose. So there's two 12 megapixel cameras on the back, f1.5 and f2.4. So the main camera um, can switch based on how much light there is. If there's not much light, you want to switch to a lower lower number, basically f1.5. That opens things up and allows more light in. Um, if it's if it's bright enough, you you close it down. Um, uh, or is it the way around? No, I'm sure that's right. That is the right way around. Uh, to 2.4. So it, it literally you can see it. You can see it. I, mean, I probably can't emulate it at this point. We won't worry. But I do quite like actually having the second camera that's got the two times zoom. I've never had that before. I've had various phones with two cameras, or I've at least reviewed various phones with two cameras. Um, but they've always been. I mean, it's normally been like Huawei that has either a black and white or a different, like a different one just for depth perception or stuff like that. And it is quite a nice way to just hit the two times, and you can get that a little bit close to your subject, and you still get the obviously the high res uh, image rather than a digit. It's not a digital zoom; it is literally um, a proper zoom. So the rear cameras can do 4K at 60 frames per second, which I think is pretty impressive. 1080p can be done at 240 frames per second, and 720p can do 960 frames per second, and that's where you get the super slow mo from, um, which I tried a couple of times. And it's, I mean, it's certainly interesting. It's not, I mean, because it, it is only 720p and the quality is not going to be great. You need very expensive big cameras to get great quality, but it is definitely is quite good fun. Um, the front facing camera is an 8 megapixel f1.7. It can film at 2K, so 1440p uh, at 30 frames per second. I don't think any of the phones on the market can do 2K from the front facing camera. So that's. Uh, that's quite a big plus for some people, I suppose, not everybody. Because to be honest, I generally do shoot in 1080p even when I've got the option to do higher. Um, it has HDR, the cameras. I, th I don't know if both or the rear, or if that's a software done thing. Um, I have always quite liked the Samsung camera app, which we can get into with a double click of the power. And the power button is quite clicky, actually. Not always like my Pixel 2 XL, that the one annoying thing is, and it's probably because I've got a skin on it, which kind of makes it quite flush. I, 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 sometimes I'm trying to double click the pan, I, I can't, I just turn it on and off. God damn it. But this this one is nice and clicky and works very well. So let's bring in the captain just so you can see how quick. Actually, you can't need to be able to see my finger really as we do that. So that was pretty fast. That's almost instant, I would say. Um, if we talk about the actual quality of the uh, the photos, I think generally the stills look great. They're good colours. They're good detail. Um, no, I, I wouldn't say there's really any issues in, in the stills. Low light images, they look very good. Um, I don't think I would have an issue if I was leaving, or well, I probably will be, leaving my Pixel 2 XL for the Note 9. I think the camera quality, because that being the strength of the Pixel 2 XL, the Note 9 kind of holds its own. You could maybe argue it's not quite as good, maybe. Um, but definitely it holds its own. Uh, I didn't mention actually the... There's, there's an option in the software, well, it's not an option, but one of the things in the software is that if you take a picture when somebody blinks or it's a little bit blurry, that it tells you. So I took one from using the front facing camera in the gym, and I think I was kind of bringing it down before it actually took the picture, or I wasn't, you know, basically it did get a bit blurry in it, and I saw the thing pop up saying, yeah, it was blurry. So I went and took it again, and it, went, it was better. So that's quite handy. The front facing camera generally is pretty good. It's not as great in low light as the rear camera, but at the same time, generally the images look quite crisp and sharp. Um, I've just realized I didn't actually show you. Let's go back into the camera app because I do like the Samsung camera app. For one thing, I love having stills and video. If I press that now, it's going to record video straight away. There's no swapping between things, and literally, I can take a picture, I can start video. So, I do like you can do that straight away. Over on this side, we can, we can swipe between the different options. So, we've got a pro mode where it's all fairly manual, we've got panorama mode, super slow mo. Oh. Yeah, so again, you, you can draw, <laughs> you put a box on the screen or the box is on the screen, and when something moves through it, that's when it triggers the, the super slow mo. You can have it to manual, I think. Is it going to tell us that in a minute? Um, AR emoji. So these, these, are, these are kind of amusing. So, yeah, just a little bit weird, I suppose. Make an emoji of yourself. Let's have a bunny. I can be a bunny rabbit. Hello? 
How weird would that be if I did the whole review as a weird bunny rabbit? Uh, so, uh, yeah, they're just, I mean, they're not, they're not by any means kind of something you definitely need. But they're kind of funny, aren't they? You can have a bit of a play with them. What is that one? Oh. Open your mouth. Oh, dear. So, uh, just a bit of stupid fun, isn't it, really? Um, back to the more serious things. So, video, I think it generally looks very good. Um, it's quite impressive video stabilization. Probably not quite as good as the Pixel 2 XL, uh, but still very, very good. And hopefully they're still working on it because as you, as you pan, you do still get some of the jerking. I think it's the video stabilization almost fighting you pan. So if you imagine if you're wobbling like that, it's trying to keep the image in the, in the middle as you wobble the device. So if you start panning, it probably gets to a point where it goes, oh no, he's panning, Clunk, and then it goes, oh hang on, he's panning. Clunk. That's what I assume it's doing. Hopefully that can be fixed or improved in software updates. Definitely the Pixel 2 XL or even the Pixel XL started off really quite bad like that and it, it got a lot better so hopefully samsung will do the same so camera generally i would say really very good um maybe on a level not on a level but maybe it's a worthy contender or can be compared to the pixel 2 xl which not a lot of phones can we're gonna move on to the battery um so it's a 4000 milliamp hour li-ion battery charged by usb type c or wireless charging some of the report, some people report truly epic stats. I've seen, I've seen a screenshot of some guy with ten hours screen on time. Um, others report thirty hours of, of just you know easily doing thirty hours use of the actual device, <laughs> which surprised me. So when I first got it, so day one, you're doing a lot of stuff. You're doing a lot of installing. You're doing all that kind of. It ripped through the battery. That's fairly normal. Day two was at the Moto GP, and I was taking loads of 4K video. I was taking photos ripped through the battery barely lasted 12 hours before I had to get it on charge when I got home but even after that I was generally getting six or seven percent of drain every hour and that's I mean that's just not good that's not that's not acceptable and I was I was really really worried I did my battery test that I normally do and it came in at a 92 which isn't bad that's the top of kind of the best really apart from the two out in front on I think 94 and 93 I think there's a load of phones on 92, which is like, good, they're all good battery life, which kind of surprised me. Because um, I was getting, it was, it, was just, it was just burning through, and I was really worried. I was thinking, how is this possible? How can this be? What was the Note 8 like? If everyone's saying the Note 9 is better, if I'm burning through battery in kind of 12 or 14 hours, I was really worried. No one likes battery anxiety when you think, oh, am I going to make it? So I got to a point where I thought, I think it was like the Wednesday or the Thursday. I thought, Do you know what? I'm just factory resetting, and we're starting again. Um, and I have to say, it's been amazing since then. So I redid my test, and it was only 1% different, so it scored a 93% the second time through. And you might say, well, that's not fair, you, you, you didn't like the first result, so you're doing it again. Well, no, I, didn't, I, didn't, I wasn't sure the first result was a, was a true reflection, and I wouldn't want to tell you guys a result that I thought most of you aren't going to get that, that I think there was something wrong with my install. Um, so I thought it, the right thing is to do it again. And it was quite funny, so it's an hour-long test, and I'd keep an eye on it to see what it's scoring, and it was doing amazing. It was it watched like I think halfway it was at ninety seven. No, it was past halfway. And it was at ninety seven still. It was like forty minutes, thirty five minutes in. I'm thinking, oh, this could be a new record. And uh, it got, it was a, it came down to ninety four, which is the level best, with about seven minutes to go. And I was getting a bit anxious. I was like, oh my god, is it gonna is it gonna equal the record? And I looked around, I looked around, and I looked back, and it hit the like the time for an hour and it had dropped to 93 when did that happen so i brought up battery log so it can tell you by the second when the different things change and it missed a 94 by nine seconds nine seconds that's fine though i'll report it as a 93 i mean it's so close to a 94 but the fair thing is to record it as a 93 bottom line actually the battery's doing amazing for me now generally i'm losing kind of one and a half two percent per hour um Let's go in quickly to see what see what it's telling us at the moment. So it's still learning the, the usage patterns actually, so this is no use to me at all. Let's come back out and let's go into GSAM battery monitor. 
So that tells us we're going for four hours 43. I'm at 88%, so I've used 12% in almost five hours. So at the minute, I'm at 2.5%. Now, some of that, I did have the, the mid-level power saving on, just kind of as a test, really. So it's scoring a bit better than it normally would. But that is actually um, another sort of quite a good feature. And we're getting to kind of software bits here, so I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but I think it's very relevant to the battery. We're going to device maintenance. One thing you can do is optimize now, and you see it basically... Just kind of having a bit of a clean up, um, but I like it. Tells sort of tells you what it's doing and or what it's done, and then also here it tells you sort of there's a load of apps that it's still running. So I'm going to hit save power, and it's going to it's going to close those down. Over time, it starts learning which apps it just shouldn't allow to sit in the background, basically. Um, but it takes a bit of time, as it says, it's still learning my usage patterns. But what you can do is power saving mode. So you hit you hit that, and you can see the different options that you have. I hit apply and again we'll see it kind of go through activating those and this is what I was testing earlier and I was losing like well, I don't know an hour after I charged the full turn this on um, and an hour later I was still on a hundred percent I think two hours later it finally dropped to one percent I think no I think in the second hour I had to start using it and it dropped it did drop maybe one maybe even two percent uh, so maybe it's on like 98 after two hours that's that's, that's that is pretty epic. Um, so then I started testing. I, I logged in on my on a different Google account and basically messaged myself in Hangouts. Came through straight away on the phone because so I was thinking, well, does it, is it kind of shut everything down? Will I still know if people have messaged me? But it did. The, hang the Hangouts came through like instantly. Um, brilliant. But then I tried to email, email myself and it didn't even. I even unlocked the phone and went in. So you see, the scroll, um, always on display has gone off. That's one of the things it did. Um, but even, even when I went into the phone, it still didn't say, oh, you've got an email. I had to go into inbox, and it finally then refreshed it and said, oh, here's your email, Andy. Um, so I can see it being suitable for just those times when you know you're going to need more power or you need to last longer. You know, I, I think possibly you would last three or four days with the mid-level power setting done. Um, so... Really quite impressive. In fact, G I think GSAM was telling me I'd get 120 hours, which would be, what, five days? Is that right? I don't, yeah, I think so. Um, so, that aside, from normal mode, general day-to-day -day use, I think it's probably comparable to my Pixel 2 XL, which generally I thought, I mean, it had the Pixel 2 XL has such good battery, I didn't even really bother looking at it. So, um, in some ways, I'm kind of thinking about thinking, oh, did it or did it not? Because I, I didn't really worry about it. I had no battery anxiety at all, which I think is kind of where I'll be now, now that I've sort of done the hard reset and it seems to be in a much better place. The standby time, standby battery usage has really dropped down. Um, so finally, in this video, connectivity. I did have a few issues with Bluetooth, or I do have a few issues with Bluetooth. When I use my in-ear Jabra Elite Sport um, headphones for the gym, they are, there's literally, you know, there's no wires at all. I noticed, I think I got on one machine, the, the lay down leg curl machine, so I'm laying on my belly, and I had my phone kind of around on my front underneath my leg, so I was basically laying on my phone, and all of a sudden it was crackling a little bit, it even cut out for a second. In fact, yeah, it wasn't crackling, it kind of cut out, cut out again, and then it, and then it seemed to be okay, and I kind of got back up and moved around to the side, and it was fine, but I've not, I didn't notice that, I mean, mind you, I did, I did have a lie on my Pixel, I think I probably did, uh, so, Yes, yeah, some slight interruptions that some people might find out. I mean, that was okay. I didn't mind. I just kind of moved around. And it, it literally, that's the only time in sort of 50 minutes of working in the gym, uh, working out in the gym, that it that I sort of noticed it. I don't think it happened any other points. Um, it's got things like smart Wi-Fi. So, that, so I had on last night, I had connected to my friend's Wi-Fi, but it wasn't the strongest of signals. And at one point I noticed it had sort of dropped that and went back to a mobile data. I think that's a fairly normal Android thing. I don't think it's a Samsung thing. But I wouldn't say otherwise, I didn't have any sort of issues with connectivity. I do use Bluetooth a lot in the car and everything, and it, it was just that one time. So don't get me wrong, I'm not saying, oh, the Bluetooth's a big problem. I'm just saying that I did have that one issue. Um, but I use Bluetooth a lot, no other times was there a problem. Um, so NFC, all been fine. So yeah, otherwise, everything's been good. I've made a couple of calls, really loud and clear, for me at least, I don't know what it sounds like to them. Um, but no issues with connectivity. So, in the next video, I'm going to move on to software. I don't know if that's all going to fit in one or not. We'll see how we go. I'll see you there.